Hello, this is Tom from anti-proton.com. I just got home from work and I looked in my um, came on my computer and I saw a message from uh, Sakura Main. I think Sakura means cherry blossom. But anyway, now she had a question about her uh, child. Apparently, she has a little daughter who plays in a sandbox at school, and this is in Japan. And the sandbox was tested by someone and the uh, reading they received was 22 counts per minute off of the sand. Basically, in a nutshell, she's curious of whether or not this is safe. The problem in this scenario is uh, several fold. First off, the type of measurements taken, and second off, the fact that, it, and this is the most problematic part, it's a child. At what point do you draw the line and say what is or is not safe for a child? As far as I'm concerned, you'd want to have no radiation for a child, but obviously that can't be avoided. Natural background radiation will, ex will expose a child. But anyway, let's see if we can address this piece by piece. First and foremost, I am not a physicist. I do not claim to be a physicist. Understand that if you have a child and you have medical uh, questions, a doctor is usually the best person to ask. Do not listen to, you know, to random people on the internet, even though I'm going to answer your question. Remember not to just believe everything you hear. Double check everything, especially if you have a child. You know, it's, it's important. But regardless, I'll attempt to answer your question as best as I can, and I'll try to be very conservative about it because of the fact that I, you have a child. Now, to answer the question um, asked to me, uh, what would I do if it were my child? Well, I have no child, so it's kind of hard for me to answer the question. I can tell you what I think I would do, but I have no idea what I actually would do. Anyway, I'll try to get to that at the end. Let me try to get first into a little bit about what's going on here, okay? First off, let me talk about the problems with the readings. Okay, let's see here. The type of Geiger counter that I use has a thin window like this one. And this end right here is a hole that alpha radiation can get into, and then the rest of it right here is like a battery. It looks like a battery, sort of. It's not. It looks like one. Radiation shoots through it, and it's detected. Okay? On TV, I've seen a lot of the uh, uh, Japanese officials using wider, larger tubes, like this pancake tube. See? Pancake? It's bigger. And as a result of being bigger, it's a greater surface area. I'm not sorry, not, sorry, not surface area, a greater volume. You see, as radiation passes through the detector, it's the size that matters, honestly. If you fired a lot of bullets, at a tiny target and you fired a lot of bullets at a really large target, which one is going to get more hits? Each hit is a count. So if I have a counter this big and it measures 10 counts per minute and I have one that's double the size, it will measure 20 counts per minute as long as they're the same sus substance and otherwise the same characteristics. This is an important thing to understand because if they measure 22 counts per minute on my Geiger counter, that would be a little bit above my background, which is 14, but not, I wouldn't consider that terribly high, especially off a of play sand, which has sand in it, of course. Sand often has radioactive materials built into it, like uh, uranium or thorium. It's naturally occurring in the rock and the sand. I mean, it could be it could be fallout from Fukushima. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say it's not, but you know, it's natural to find more radiation in rocks. All my ro all of my rock collection, you know, takes a little bit greater than anything else. But at the same time, if they did the same sample on a large pancake one, let's say this one is three times bigger than mine, so if you get 22 counts per minute on this little guy, then you'll get, uh, what is that, 6.66... Oh, sorry, I did that backwards. 22 counts on the big one, see how easy it is to mess up, is equivalent to 6.66 counts per minute the little guy. Now, it would be important to know what kind of instrument was used to do this test. You know, if these were officials or whatnot, if you did this yourself, and if you did this yourself, or a friend or somebody, what did they use? It's important to know how big the instrument is. My little one-inch uh, uh, Geiger Mueller tube would probably consider 22 to be fine. Most people that do testing usually use larger pancake probes. They usually get three times higher readings than me. So you should compare that to what background is in Japan. Let's let's look at that quickly. Let's see what background is in Japan. You like my little funny picture here? It's actually a cat. Looks like a rat, though. Anyway, um, let's look at Japan currently. Here's radiationnetwork.com. 
I, of course, am 10 counts per minute. This is my house. Notice there are other people in the 20s and 30 ranges. Some 9s, some 33s. Perfectly safe. For these readings, it's perfectly safe. Now, if you read the sand and you got 50 or 60 counts per minute, that would be not safe. And I'll get into your yearly figures in just a minute. Here's Japan. These are live feeds. This updates every minute. And as you can see, 18 counts per minute right around Tokyo. So I guess that's Tokyo, isn't it? Well, I don't know anything about Japanese um, geography. Let's see if I'm right. Is that Tokyo? I don't know where Tokyo is, apparently. I might think that's where Tokyo is. But whatever. It's whatever this thing is. So, <clears throat> anyhow. It's also important to understand your Geiger counter, too. Let me move out of the way here. Here's my Geiger counter. See this little guy right there? That's the tube in my Geiger counter. The ones that they're using in Japan are probably these bigger guys right here. You usually use these for contamination testing. Notice the size difference. They will get many times higher counts than mine does. You can go to your manufacturer's website if you have a Geiger counter and look up information about it. They'll tell all about it, including all the specifications. Anyway, let's move this out of the way for a second. Let's get into your calculations for a minute. You can't use sieverts, in your case microsieverts, because a microsievert equals gray of radiation exposure multiplied by the type of radiation that you're seeing. And it has a lot to do with the energy that you're detecting. Let me put it to you in a different way. Your Geiger counter, assuming it's yours, I don't know if the government did it, but most of them are calibrated for cesium-137. Cesium-137 produces a beta particle, a give or take about 512 kilo, kilo electron volts, and one gamma at 661 kilo electron volts. It also puts out another energy of gamma, I mean another energy of beta as well, but I'm just giving you an example here, so I'm not going to go into every conceivable possible output it can put out, okay? What they usually do is they put something in front of the beta that blocks it, so only the gamma comes out. They put the Geiger counter up here and they detect it, and they realize that 100 counts per minute equals, well let's put it like this, 10 counts per minute would then equal uh, 6.61 million electron volts of energy, wouldn't it? Right? Let's see. Here's your tube. And if it gets 10 counts at this rate, because we're blocking the beta here, then we would be 10 times... Oops, well, 10 times this number here is obviously 6.61 million electron volts, or mega electron volts. See? That's at 10 counts per minute. 10. Now look at this substance, technetium-99. Now you're not going to find this, well you could potentially, but probably not now. It puts out a, a, a much weaker gamma and only 140. So 10 counts per minute of this is only equal to 1.4 million electron volts. What I'm trying to tell you here is that um, you can't just ex expect that 10 counts of this will equal 10 counts of this. Remember, microsieverts, microsieverts is a, a, a approximation of the effects of radiation on a human, which is measured, uh, uh, which is a, 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 a taken from the a, a measurement of grays. And a gray is equal to one um, joule of energy divided by one kilogram. So you understand that it's related to energy, right? Look at this, strontium-90. The beta that it puts off is at 400 and, uh, 546 kilo electron volts. Now the benefit to this, as you can see, is strontium-90 uh, strontium and cesium-137 have similar energies. So, and they're both incredibly common from the fallout. Um, if I were you, <clears throat> I would take the sand if you're really worried about it. And you, and you might be. If I had a child, I'd probably be paranoid. Take the sand, put it in a bag, take it to a uh, university or someplace, and have them test it on something called a scintillator. The scintillator measures like this. Let me let me get rid of all of this for a second here. Let me wipe this away. The scintillator measures energy like this. Energy. This is the higher energy. This is the lower energy. So low to high and then um, the amount that's detected, let's call this the amount. 
and it'll detect, let's say that right here is is 500, 500 kilo electron volts, which is about where cesium-137 was. Here's your technetium-90 down here at, at 140 kilo electron volts. If you detected technetium, you'd get something that looks like this, and you'd know that you had technetium. Whereas if you had um, strontium-90, for example, it might look more like this. And then if you found one that looked like this, you might know that you had both. That's kind of how a scintillator works. It's a um, interesting little toy. If you put the sand in it, it would show you a pattern that would allow you to see what is actually the contamination of the sand. And if you find things like thorium, and you know, then you're going to know that the sand is just naturally a little radioactive, which is not uncommon to find. Now, to give you an idea on the math, and I warn you about doing the math yourself, when you have a, you know, when it's you and it's me and we're just doing the math to see what we think we're being exposed to, that's one thing. But when it's a child, it's a different issue. I assume you're not a nuclear professional because you're asking the question. And I am not. I am not a nuclear professional. I am an enthusiast. I'm an amateur. Um, I'm, I, I like to think that I'm somewhat knowledgeable, but I'm definitely not infallible. If you're doing this and it involves children, you should seek a health care professional or a health physicist. I know it's kind of a strange term, but that's what they go by. They can explain to you a little bit more about what this means. Okay, but let's go into the basics here. For every kilogram, for every kilogram of matter, one kilogram, if I can increase the energy in it by one joule, one joule, that equals one gray of, of, uh, of radiation. Well, if, if this is ionizing. So I take this one kilogram, expose it to radiation that deposits one joule, then it's a gray. If this were equal to two kilograms, and I increase it by one joule, that would be equal to... Um, that would be equal to one half gray. So, oops. Yeah. Durr, did my math wrong. One half gray. Okay. So that's how you expo That's how you determine that. Now, you're dealing in this case. The exposure you're talking about is in the micro grays. Okay. So how does a micro gray become a sievert? Well, um, let me. Here's a micro micro gray. There's a little M symbol, it's a mu symbol. Here's the G and a Y for gray. All right. Well, you have to multiply this first by the type of radiation you're be, you're you're being exposed to. Gamma, beta. God, I'm drawing really badly today. Gamma. You know what? It's the marker. I have my better marker around here someplace. Okay, I do not, so I will just continue with the crappy marker. All right, so gamma, beta, and alpha. Gamma, beta, alpha. Okay, this right here is called the radiation weighting factor. That's supposed to be a W for people like me who don't know how to write. There, gamma weighting factor. What this is telling you is that gamma and beta are roughly equivalent in the amount of damage they cause to the body. Alpha is about 20 times stronger. So this is gamma radiation and beta radiation are being exposed to. So let's let's go with a, a 1 because they're both a 1. So far no change. 10 micrograys is equal to 10 micrograys times 1. I mean there's no difference because you're just multiplying it by 1. And then you're multiplying it by what, you're, what, what part of the body you're affecting. And if you're going to do the whole body of a human, you usually go by one. So again, in this case, my, uh, uh, 10 micro, micro grays of radiation is equal to 10 micro sieverts of radiation. Now, pretend for a minute that this was gamma, uh, alpha, alpha particles like uranium produces alpha particles, for example, then this would be a 20. So 10 micrograys would equal 200 microsieverts. All right? 
Now, before you, you, before you can understand the micrograys, you have to understand how much energy you're being deposited in per kilogram. And if you recall from my earlier chart, various radioactive sources produce various amounts of energy. And so as a result of it, this is the reason that sieverts, microsieverts and so on, and millirems and millirankins and stuff are not really an appropriate measurement for unknown sources. If you know, for example, that the sand has cesium-137 in it, or strontium-90, or, you know, cobalt or whatnot, you can measure for it, and then you can do the math to figure out what the difference is, you know? You know that it's rated for cesium-137, so you can figure out what the conversion is. But since you don't know, because it's just playground sand, I mean, it doesn't come with, you know, from the store with a big sign on it that says what's in it, and you don't know. You don't know if it's natural, and you don't know if it's contamination. And because you're in Japan, it could technically be either or both. So as a result of that fact, you basically have to abandon this sort of math. It's easy to either scare yourself needlessly, or if it is not so good, lull yourself into a false sense of security. You don't want to do math and then find out that you forgot to round a one. The easiest thing to do is to use counts per minute. Counts per minute is by far the safest way to do it. Now, what you want to do is you want to take the Geiger counter. There's your Geiger counter, and there's the device that it holds it on, right? There's your Geiger counter. Put it someplace. Leave it for one hour. That's 60 minutes. Take the number of counts you got in 60 minutes. Let's say that, um, let's say... 6, 60, 600. Let's say that you got 600 counts in 6 minutes. I mean in 60 minutes. Okay? 600, 60 equals 10, right? 10 counts per minute? Yeah. So, yeah. So 10 counts per minute. Okay. If you find that you have 10 counts per minute normally, then you test the sand and you get 22 counts per minute off of the same device. That way you get rid of the whole question as to which one is bigger or, or more sensitive. Then you see right here you definitely have a radioactive source. If you get 20 counts per minute and then you get 22 off of the sand, yeah, the sand might be mildly radioactive, but not no, no more radioactive than other things that are around your house. So this right here may not be a worry. So I, I, I suggest that you find out who has the Geiger counter and find out what the baseline is for the area that you're living in. How, how many counts per minute do you normally get? Because the energy is all over the place, so this is problematic to use this for your, your assessment. However, you do know this number. You can take the Geiger counter, you can test this, you can find out what the background is supposed to be in your area. And if it was an official that did the count, find out from the official what the background reading is. So you take, it's very, very simple, you take the background, and you subtract from the background the reading. This is what you read from the sand minus the background equals the actual radiation. So if you do this, you'll have an idea what the difference is. Generally speaking, 20 counts per minute, even 22, is not usually considered dangerous. If this were for an adult, I would absolutely say not to worry about 22 counts per minute if this were for an adult. I draw the line with children because it's a child. You never, ever, ever should talk about children without taking into account they're young, their cells multiply faster. You need to be very, very careful with children. Children and women are the most susceptible to radiation, naturally speaking. So consult a doctor if you're worried. For an adult, I wouldn't be worried at all. My bed, this nasty bed that I have right here that I never have the sheets on for whatever reason, 
This ugly bed puts off about, what, 18 to 20 something counts per minute normally. So I'm sitting right now as I talk to you on about 22 counts per minute. So I sleep on it every night. And the reason it has the higher reading is because of uh, alpha particles that collect on it. In fact, as a result of it, it's, remember my thing with the alpha radiation? Technically, this bed is 20 times more pen more dangerous in that regard, but alpha can't penetrate your skin very easily, so it's not a big deal. But hopefully this puts it in a little bit of perspective for you. Use counts per minute. And as, as I said, for a child, I would take the sand if you're worried about it and have it put in against a scintillator to find out what's in it. Make sure to run along average first. And again, I am not a scientist. I am an amateur, amateur, amateur science person. I would call myself an amateur physicist, but I don't want to suggest that I am truly a physicist. I am an amateur. Um, I know a hell of a lot, but I am an amateur. And I, uh, my field of research that I have a degree in is computers, not, not science. I just love science. So seek a second opinion of a trained professional if you have any worries. I think you're probably fine, but you know you are in Japan, and that is something to take into account. You literally could have fallout. It's possible. Anyway, uh, this has been Tom from anti-proton.com, and um, I guess uh, that should be about the end of the video. Bye-bye.